Hey, what's good everybody? One thing I always noticed about like Sasuke and his forms is that Heavy Sasuke and Kage Summit Sasuke were always super comparable uh, and just based on like their narrative and their scaling as well. So I thought it'd be a pretty interesting idea if we just kind of swapped their main fights. Um, and you know, I'm not alone today. I got another goat on the channel. Uh, hasn't been here for a while, but we'll have him on a lot more. Uh, go ahead and say what's up, bro. Yo, what's up guys? It's Sage of Thick Cavs here. Always glad to be on the channel. I know uh, Virtue's been dropping some bangers recently, so you know, it, it, he's 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 been doing it without without any help here. So he didn't need me, but I'm glad to be back on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, same for you. Y'all y'all could definitely go check out uh, some of his videos. He's got some heat avatar stuff cooking up right now um, that are just popping off. So appreciate it. We'll thanks. definitely uh, we'll definitely you know promote each other. But um, do you want to kind of lay out oh like some of the matches for Heavy and Summit Sasuke? Yeah, so essentially what we're going to be doing is taking sort of a composite version of both of these characters um, at, at their sort of peak physical forms in these, uh, it, whether it be Heavy or, you know, Summit Sasuke. So um, I think it's fair to, or I, th I think it's important to let you guys know, like, so the Summit Sasuke we'll be talking about is essentially like a rejuvenated, refreshed su uh, Five Kage Summit Sasuke going into the Donzo fight. So he should have pretty much all of the abilities that he has in the Donzo fight. Um... And then with Heavy Sasuke, it's like Data Fight Heavy. So we're going to be swapping these two characters, having Summit Sasuke face off against Orochimaru, uh, Data and Itachi, and then Heavy Sasuke face off against A, Mayangara, and Donzo. So we got some really sick matchups here for you. Um, you you want to sort of tell them, uh, you know, your opinions on how these two scale to one another, or like who's higher, who's lower, and some of those reasons. Because yeah. I think that's, it's important to lay that groundwork here. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I will say, I think Heavy Sasuke and Summit Sasuke are pretty comparable. Um, I've always been leaning towards Summit Sasuke because, like, well, one thing you'll note, right, is you look at, like, Taka Sasuke. He's definitely weaker than Heavy Sasuke, and Jugo notes the reason to why that is, and he kind of chops it up to the fact that he has not recovered from the Itachi fight yet, and he's still kind of fatigued and he lost to Orochimaru. But now, he's not fatigued and he's definitely got a stronger and obito even remarks about his hatred growing and his hatred being his his best friend his strongest weapon and his shinobi way and that his hatred kind of just amps his power and it also amps his susano which also amps his hatred so that's kind of like a uh it kind of bounces off each other in a sort of way which is kind of interesting as like his hatred is literally a manifestation of his v3 susano's face which is kind of weird um but yeah that kind of goes off each other and kari notes um during like the Raikage portion of the fight, which is, you know, weaker than the one we'll be using for some of Sasuke, that Sasuke is now like, is his chakra is even like colder and thicker than it was in CM2, um, which of course colder and thicker does not mean, you know, faster and stronger than a uh, CM2, you know, like a three tone weight, you know, Sasuke would be that, you know, cause he, he might not be, uh, you know, who knows, but I think you can take that interpretation and say, you know, he's, uh, there's no way to really prove what that's in reference to, um, and I, I think that's fair, but I do think you also should uh, give some charity and potentially at least give the, the idea that it is possible it could be referring to power, considering that his hatred is uh, literally being, you know, shown whenever she talks about, like, him changing and his chakra getting colder is literally when he's getting amps from hatred, such as, like, him getting the Mangekyo amp and getting more hatred and stuff. Then she says it again. Same happens at the end when he gets the V4 Susano and she remarks that it's getting even colder. It's literally, she says it's getting colder when he also is getting stronger you know again with the susano and with the mangekyo so you could say he's getting uh you can just imply that when she's saying these things he is getting stronger and faster because it happens three times and two of the three we know for sure he's getting stronger and faster um so it's probably happening as well in this instance but if you don't want to take that um i think that's fine you know because there are a lot of different areas where chakra properties get brought up do you want to like bring up some of those yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so uh, one of the things that, you know, I I've argued myself and a lot of other people have argued is that more chakra or more dense or powerful chakra doesn't necessarily mean better physical capabilities. And I think a good example of this is actually what we see from the Sound 4. So like Sakon, um, whenever he goes into his Curse Mark 2 state, Kiba states in his head uh, that his chakra has grown to 10 times what it was before. And we never see any evidence of him getting any faster because he doesn't, like, blitz 
Kiba after that, right? So uh, we we know that his speed isn't increased by a 10x chakra. So like, what does he get? Well, when you look at the data book statements, it talks about how he unlocks the ability to use his like cell division parasitic thing on other people. So what it does is it amps his actual abilities themselves, not necessarily his physical stats. So you could argue that, you know, Sasuke getting a colder, darker chakra doesn't necessarily mean that he's getting physically faster. But we know for a fact it's stated multiple times that his hatred makes him stronger. So I would say that it's reasonable to assume that as his chakra gets darker and colder in reference to his hatred growing, that he does get physically superior to what he was before. So at worst, I don't, I don't think it's unfair to say that 5 Kage Summit Sasuke is physically relative to Hebi Sasuke. Um, at best, you can get him above, five, uh, above Hebi Sasuke, but it's really like disingenuous, in my opinion, to argue that he's like significantly below him for a variety of reasons. But uh, do you think that's fair? Oh, yeah, no, I, I definitely agree. I mean, like, there's just a lot of assertions that can be made, you know what I mean? And I think the best way, you know, just to not piss too many people off is to just say they're somewhat comparable you know what i mean i think it would be fair to say that if you do think they're relative in that initial encounter during the raikage fight with summit sasuke and compare him to like heavy right then you say he gets all these amps and he gets amps and he keeps on fighting which fighting makes you stronger as stated by b then i think this summit sasuke could have an edge physically but i still think they're like relative nonetheless especially when taking into account things like cm2 um which are like amps as well um, yeah but so the first matchup we actually got is pretty interesting and it's um we got pretty much summit sasuke versus orochimaru and <laughs> i'm sorry did listen, you say this was I mean, pretty interesting <laughs> <laughs> listen we we cannot do this we cannot yeah. put summit sasuke against this sick orochimaru in his bed that is unfair um so <laughs> we could take like a part one you know like a part one also the one that's in his bed is impressive like don't get me wrong he reacts to the pre-absorbed sasuke you know what i mean like through the door bro, put without seeing up. him yeah Dude, that's kind of that's kind of a crazy feat, yeah. by the way. Uh, you know, like puts his arms up completely off guard, go to the feet, and he reacts to him more than that. But anyway, he's still strong. But I think it's more fair to like put him against like a part one Orochimaru rather than this like you know Orochimaru that's in his bed and can't walk. You know, I think that's more more fair. Um, in which I think you could make some assertions that Sasuke definitely wins this. But I will say one thing you should bring up is like. Um, how Suigetsu knows that they just now surpassed their mentors, but there's a lot of translation problems with that, and I know I brought this up before, and I've never really stood on a certain side of it, I've just, you know, kind of used it more supplementary, but still, nonetheless, I have brought it up before, and it's mainly just Suigetsu saying that, like, Orochimaru doesn't need to come back, this is our time now, you know what I mean? We don't need him anymore, we, we, you know, look at what we've done so far. Um, it's more like that, not like, oh, we're just now stronger in EMS. <laughs> yeah. You know, probably not. Um, now, Orochimaru is impressive. Like, I think his nerf is very similar to Hiruzen's as well. You know, like, he has to, like, uh, stab his own hand to prevent himself from crying and whatnot. And I think that, like, you know, Hiruzen was also nerfed as well. And I I mean, most people know that. Everybody and their mothers heard that argument before. Yeah, um, he, he literally, so like, like holds back Enma from killing. <laughs> like, he, he, he like, yeah, literally yeah. stops him from biting Orochimaru. So. <laughs> Yeah, why does nobody bring that up? He's like, oh, he like pulls him back and everything. Yeah. <laughs> why does yeah. nobody bring that up? Yeah, I know. Um, so maybe you could just take like the fan book statement of them being equals, you know? And I think that's kind of fair as well. Um, in which you could say that, you know, Kabuto states this, Hiruzen is, you know, above all five Kage, right? Or whatever. Um, but that also has to be in reference to like the last time he was ever seen fighting, which would be in the Nine Tails attack, which is noted to be like above Orochimaru probably. Yeah. Um, but I, there are like objective medians, like the fan book states that like the top of Konoha is the top of all, you know, so you could still assert that. Um, so I think like Orochimaru is comparable to the Sasuke. I think Sasuke by this point is probably above each of the Kage individually. You know, I, I think that's fair to assert. Um, but I think Orochimaru is probably around that level as well. So how do we think like, um, like their arsenals clash. What do you, what do you think about that? Yeah, so I think obviously the biggest issue that Orochimaru is going to have is getting around the Susano. I mean, I I don't think that he has anything in his arsenal that is going to be able to actually get through the uh, the the full uh, fully manifested you know half body Susano. So that 
that would sort of lead to, uh, you know, I think Orochimaru exhausting some of his chakra to try to find a way through it. Uh, and then, you know, obviously the Susano arrows themselves are incredibly fast. Even Kakashi's Kamui, which was hyper developed by the point where he was able to snipe away that uh, Susano arrow. It, it barely was able to keep up with it, and I, I mean, I, I don't know about you, dude, but I'm gonna say that Kakashi's perception at that point in time is probably higher than part one Orochimaru's physical speed, so, like, you could make an argument that he just, like, gets sniped with a Susano arrow, um, he obviously wouldn't be killed by that, because, you know, he's a, he's, uh, Orochimaru, he's a cockroach, you know what I mean, um, and, uh, <laughs> I'm so sorry for that, um, <laughs> but he, uh, he's, he's gonna have a really tough time getting through the Susano, but then Sasuke is gonna have a really tough time putting him down. Now, I do think Sasuke's biggest advantage in this fight, though, outside of Susano, is obviously Enton. You know, we, we do see him use the body substitution that he learned from Orochimaru in his fight against Itachi in order to counter Itachi's uh, Amaterasu, but if he uses, you know, Kagatsuchi flame control and creates, like, some sort of flame construct to stab through him, maybe you could argue he wouldn't be able to use the body substitution. Uh, so, I mean, those are two really big issues that he's gonna have to face, and then also another big issue is gonna to have to deal with is the fact that Sasuke knows like all of his moves and Sasuke is one of the smartest combatants in the entire series so Sasuke is going into this battle with a few significant advantages in my opinion but I do think Orochimaru has a couple advantages of his own you want to sort of yeah. go into um what he brings to the table in this battle yeah, and, and before I touch on that, I want to touch on two other things. Is like, um, we actually know that Orochimaru states this about Heavy Sasuke. He's literally like, man, they called me a genius. Oh boy, look at this kid. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> After he kills all those random ninja and stuff. And as well as one thing you can say about the body, um, like whatever you call it, um, I can't remember the name. Body replacement jutsu. Yeah, the body replacement jutsu, sorry. Um, if that comes out, Sasuke could always hit it with Amaterasu, and the Amaterasu would just carry on to that other body, which yeah. is kind of interesting, so it could create, like, a loop. But I think the Edo Tensei are actually kind of interesting because, um, they do regen just naturally. Um, this is if he can pull that off. This is presupposing he pulls off the Edo Tensei. Um, but then, like, things like Amaterasu, you know, might not be as crucial. Um, but still, nonetheless, I think the Amaterasu's burning rate you know, would burn them far faster than what they would ever regen from. Um, and it would kind of just keep them null, you know what I mean? Unless something is able to get the Amaterasu off, which I don't see what Orochimaru can do. So he can kind of set them aside, you know, and just light them on fire, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, and if anything, Sasuke can just turn it off if they like, if Orochimaru like forces them to come at him or something. Um, but I do like what you said with the Susano arrow. Like, I actually do think that probably blitz Orochimaru because... The Susano arrow is a blitz level above his own combat speed, you know, so even if we, we already said that Sasuke is relative in combatant to this Orochimaru, you know, even maybe above, um, so when you take things like the Susano arrow, which is like a blitz level above himself, as him and Donzo are able to like pierce each other at the same time, yeah, when the arrow comes out, it's like one and done, snipe dead, you can't even yeah. move, um, so it, you know, it, it kind of paints this picture that this would blitz Orochimaru, and Orochimaru doesn't have much to counter against that, you know? Um, so I, I really do think that, like, Summit Sasuke just has quite a good advantage into Orochimaru, I think he probably wins. What do you think? Yeah, I would say he, he probably wins. I think if Orochimaru is able to get the Edo Tensei off, he might have a little bit of a chance if you assume that, like, the wood style that Hashirama uses might be able to absorb chakra from the Susano and weaken it. Um, that that could be some sort of win condition, but again, Enton just counters. You know, it, it sets ablaze all of the wood style that he can use. It also sets ablaze Hashirama himself, and we know that whenever the, the Edo Tensei yeah. are severely damaged, they can't move. So if he just leaves the Amaterasu or, you know, the uh, Kagatsuchi or whatever going, um, then, you know, Hashirama is going to be a non-factor. Uh, Toby Rama is going to be a non-factor. You could also argue that, like, if he does summon the coffins, that he just sets fire to the coffins themselves. Because, like, <laughs> Hiru's in throwing a couple shuriken at the coffins was enough to, like, stop one from coming up. So it's like, okay, so if, if him, like, stopping it with shuriken works, you know what I mean? Like, okay, you don't think that Amaterasu is going to work, so... Uh, I think he could probably just stop that altogether, and if he does, then Orochimaru literally has no win condition. So, yeah, I think Sasuke probably yeah. takes this with relatively low difficulty. I want to give Orochimaru something here, but th he just doesn't have any way around the Susano, in my opinion. Yeah, one other thing you could say is just, like, Sasuke can also catch him lacking with Genjutsu, because a lot of people never note that Sasuke has demonic illusion shackling stakes, just yeah. like what Itachi has, and Orochimaru got caught off guard by that. Um, so, 
you know, Sasuke can't catch him lacking for sure, especially now that he has an MS, which would, you know, probably be amping that three Tomoe Genjutsu anyway. But, um, yeah, next up, we do got, um, heavy Sasuke versus A, like in the initial area. And this is, you know, day to a fight Sasuke. Um, oh boy. As that's, this is like a pretty fresh Sasuke, I guess. Um, but, you know, I don't know. This one's pretty interesting, I will say. So, I think heavy is going to have a very hard time against A. Okay, I don't think A is as comparable to Heavy as what most people think. I think he's probably above. A lot of people do bring up, like, the Suigetsu Jugo stuff, but a lot of people never bring up that when, you know, Heavy Sasuke actually, you know, quote-unquote blitzes those two, Suigetsu is extremely nerfed um, because he also has, like, really bad traveling nerfs. Like, he was literally about to pass out, like, whenever he was going up to the hideout and stuff. He could barely walk. Um, he wanted to, like, take a break, even though he's already seen the map of where it's at already. Um, so, you know... It's it's definitely kind of disingenuous to assert stuff like that, especially when we know that they have gotten stronger as they have, you know, combated people like B. They've been training and whatnot. So to say they've gotten stronger is probably, you know, uh, you know, pretty pretty, you know, normal. I don't think that's disingenuous to say. So I think Hebi is definitely on a low end to like A. Um and especially to a V2A. I think V2A is probably gonna be blitzing around Hebi Sasuke. Yeah. Even in like uh, CM2, but there is one thing that CM2 has, and it's the fact that he has a three tomoe sharing on, which will allow him to pre cog a lot, um, which will be really helpful because that's what um initially Sasuke did with his summit form is he used his three tomoe to pre cog around you know the elbow bolt, and that will work. And one thing you brought up to me is how CM2 could actually amp his sharing on, um, like probably better than the Mangekio just having in reserve could, uh, because they can kind of stack on top of each other which is, I think is pretty interesting. So, you know, his Sharingan should be able to precog a lot of A stuff until A starts to go like V2, and I think it becomes a problem. What, what do you think? Yeah, I totally agree with everything that you just said. Um, and uh, to sort of piggyback off of it, the MS was required to react to V2. Like, he, he goes, he uses his MS Sharingan. He's still having uh, MS Sharingan's redundant, but he uses Mangekyo Sharingan um, in order to, you know, react to V2A. And so you could say, like, oh, well, he doesn't have MS whenever he's heavy, so, like, he just wouldn't be able to react to him. GG, he gets blitzed. Well, we were talking before the call, and there might be a way to get him there it's kind of tough and it's totally unquantifiable but essentially we know that there are statements uh, in the data books talking about how itachi had achieved mastery be or achieved power beyond the mangekyo sharingan meaning and this is this is apparent whenever you see that in ems is really the only other times aside from sasuke and uh, uh, sasuke and itachi that we see somebody use the fully armored susano right so like you could you could argue that the armored susano is like the top end or like 110% of Mangekyo Sharingan Mastery. And then whenever you unlock EMS, that's whenever it really is supposed to be there. Uh, that's sort of consistent with what we see. So if that's the case, then somebody who has Mastery above the Mangekyo Sharingan casting a Genjutsu on Sasuke, who then breaks it with the assistance of his Curse Mark Chakra being poured into his eye, should should allow for you to make an argument that basically says, okay, so the Curse Mark II amp should give him an ocular amp that's at least somewhat similar to what the Mangekyo Sharingan amp would be on top of the base Sharingan. So if you if you take that interpretation, you say that his ocular power should be amped to the level of like, or at least close to the level of the Mangekyo with the CM2 helping out with his ocular powers, then you could make the argument that maybe his CM2 Sharingan amped perception is on the same level of his Mangekyo perception. And if that's the case, then he should be able to react to him. But the problem is, we know, based on the fight that uh, Sasuke had with Lee at the very beginning of the Chunin exams arc, that even if you can perceive somebody's movements, if you can't physically react to them, it does not matter. And that Sasuke was like literally just keeping the Susano up, putting Enton on top of it, playing defensively, because he couldn't move out of the way of what A was, you know, bringing to him. So... I don't think that even if we give him a generous interpretation and say that the CM2 ocular amp is on the level of the Mangekyo ocular amp, that it would even matter, because I don't think he'd physically be able to react to V2A in the first place, even if he can perceive him. Are you sort of on the same wave there? Do you have a different interpretation yeah. of that? No, no, I'm completely on it. Yeah, no, I agree. Yeah. 
Gotcha. Yeah. So I, I I do think that like he probably does pretty well against V one A. I think whenever he goes into C M two, um, he might even have an edge over V one A if you think that C M two amps his speed, which I'm not entirely certain of. If you look at the data book statements on the Curse Mark Level Two state, it actually says that the Heaven and Earth Seal amps are not. Uh, not readily apparent or evident. So, you know, it is probably something that has to do more with like AP or just like overall chakra as opposed to something like physical strength and speed. But that being said, once A goes into V2, I think it's probably GG. Are you, you, you agree with that? Yeah, no, I, I agree. I think once it goes into V2, especially when he starts to stack on body flicker, um, it's over. You yeah. know what I mean? Because at that point, we already have this faster Sasuke being Summit Sasuke. And this is later into like the V2 portion of that fight. He's only able to react with his perception, um, which is something also to note about how powerful Inton is and how good it is as like an arsenal ability, as he's able to just like combat things with his perception. Um, and but so since Heavy Sasuke doesn't really have anything like that, and we know Genjutsu's kind of questionable uh, with A, um, I think it's pretty clear that A definitely uh, definitely wins that fight. Yeah, but. But then what do you think uh, happens? Do you have any <laughs> I was going to say, yeah. we, know, we talked about this before the call. Um, yeah. what, what do you think happens after he gets beat down by A? <laughs> <laughs> um, so we have this problem where if A beats him down, Orochimaru might come out. And then I think one thing to say about the Hydra is the third data book still says that it's the largest and most powerful of all snake summons. But since it gains so much mass, the speed amp that it would have to get would just be ridiculous. So it's probably not faster than a normal Orochimaru. It could be stronger, but saying it's faster is probably disingenuous considering how bad Itachi blitzes it and how much of a speed amp it would need to make it relative, you know, in stats compared to like a normal Orochimaru just to say it's one for one greater. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I think A is probably definitely still faster and he could blitz around it, but like, I mean, it's still a lose lose, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like even if it kills A, it's lose lose. Yeah, because he's um, he's just so. gonna shut down everybody in the building, bro. <laughs> like Orochimaru's <laughs> yeah, gonna come exactly. out and just like wipe the floor with everyone there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um now, next up we do have Summit Sasuke versus Datara, and I think this is kinda interesting. But this one shouldn't take too long, to be honest, yeah. because is not that contagious to note about data like if you have summit sasuke being relative to heavy okay the reason why data ever pushed him to a high diff fight is because sasuke had a bad arsenal that was it and what i mean is they have three encounters on the ground first one is from a very substantial distance and toby is in front of data and data is standing behind him sasuke uses potentially a body flicker i highly doubt it because it's never denoted and he never throws up a right tiger or anything he just runs at him which we literally see him doing as we see him halt his speed once he cuts through toby so we see him slow his speed cut through toby then data jumps back so then data reacts he lands on a tree branch right and then Sasuke jumps behind him, tries to cut him. Daedra cannot react at all. all. The only thing he can do is just react with his right hand and throw a bomb up in his face and literally states, I barely managed to escape hidden in the bomb blast. So then he runs away. And now there's even a far greater distance than that in the second encounter. And Sasuke still charges at him in the same way. Daedra sees him charge and says, nah, we're done. And just flies up in the air and starts dropping C2. And yes, then the C2 start to hurt Sasuke. They even hurt CM2 Sasuke at that. Um, but that's because the bomb's explosion velocities can scale to Sasuke, just not his combat speed or anything like that, which is consistent as once they go back down to the ground, Sasuke is just beating him to a pulp. So, you know, um, I think it's pretty consistent that the bomb's explosion velocities can scale, but not Dator's combat speed himself, which isn't even crazy because now this Sasuke has Inton mm -hmm. and that could literally just ignite Dater out of the sky. You know what I mean? So <laughs> do you have anything to say on this matchup? Yeah, it, honestly, if he wanted to go for like the, the nice easy dub, he could definitely just like Amaterasu him in the sky. But even if you want to argue that like maybe he could like, you know, sense it and like dodge the Amaterasu, which there's no evidence for, but even, even if you want to argue that and like be super generous to Datara, Sasuke can just go into his Susano and start firing arrows that Perception blitz himself. Like he, he can just like start like trying to shoot him out of the sky with these arrows that are a whole blitz tier above himself. And if he's already yeah. so, like reaching or at blitz tier level.
levels above Daedara, and then you stack an additional Blitz tier on top of that, you would really have to be generous to Daedara and, like, argue that his flight speed is a Blitz tier over... Sasuke, which I don't think is fair, so he can either shoot him out of the sky with an arrow, or he can just, you know, burn him to a crisp with Anton, and there's really nothing that he could do about it, and uh, I, I know we talked about this before the video as well, I, I think, like, if you're really trying to be generous to Daedara, you might be able to say he could break the Susano rib cage with an explosion, but I don't think he's breaking that armored Susano, or even, like, just the, the half-body, like, non-armored Susano, so... He just, yeah, there's there's nothing that he can really do here. I don't, I don't really think we need to spend too much more time on it. Mm -hmm. No, I completely agree. And trust me, I I don't want to downplay Datera. I actually do have a Datera's underrated video coming out relatively soon after this. Um, but trust me, Datera just can't do anything. It's just, an, it's just arsenically, it's just a horrible matchup. Yeah, That's all it is. This, it's just horrible. This is a good time um, to tell you guys to turn post notifications on. So when that video drops, you don't miss out. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. And if you guys are enjoying the video, make sure you guys do subscribe and consider uh, dropping a like. Um, that would be greatly appreciated. You know, unless you, unless you're a videos. terrorist, of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If you're a terrorist, then <laughs> don't even worry. But <laughs> um, next up, we got Heavy Sasuke versus May and Gara. And you know, I talked I talked quite a bit on that last one. Do you just want to let them know what happens here, bro? Here's here here here's the thing. Um, to be honest with you. Against May and Gara at the same time, I think Heavy Sasuke might have some issues. Um, he does physically scale above both of them. I made I made a video on Sasuke versus Gara throughout the series, and the most contentious section of that video. Go check it out. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, the, the most contentious section of that video was the Five Kage Summit area. I've sort of changed my opinions on it a little bit. Um, but yeah, I. I think, honestly, if they couldn't take down that version of Sasuke after the fight with A, I'm not sure if they'd be able to take down this heavy Sasuke, but I do think in terms of their arsenals, like specifically with the sand and then her, or, you know, her Keke Genkai and, and all that stuff, they could give him some serious issues. How, how do you think he interacts with like the speed of Gaara's sand in particular and, mm -hmm. um, you know, her ability to, because he's not going to have the Susano to protect him against that acid either. So like yeah. they, they offer some really interesting aspects in this fight. How do you think he sort of interacts with their arsenals? So, I mean, for May and the Acid, if you're being generous to Sasuke, you could say he subs out Snakes, because that also is kind of consistent for him to do in this character, because he took a lot of Orochimaru's arsenal. Um, again, why Orochimaru is the GOAT, but whatever. <laughs> anyway, he takes a lot of Orochimaru's arsenal and these, like, substitution ideas, um, such as, like, so he could plan out fake snakes, stuff like that, or he could block it with the CM2 wing and then just drop the wing, because um, he also does that with Data as well, and he does it against Jugo when Jugo charges at him and whatever. So Sasuke going into these, like, partial transformations is consistent, I guess, to do that. Um, so he could do that to get around, like, the acid, but... Past that, he's probably going to be able to beat up May. Like, I think the Acid, yeah, and the Corrosive Mist is bad. But, I mean, you know, yeah, <laughs> I don't want to, like, just downplay May or anything. But past that, Heavy Sasuke is blitzing them both. Yeah. Um, because Gara, his sand, a lot of people really overestimate his sand. They really like to say it's a blitz tier above V2 Raikage. And... I don't think that's very generous. Now, you could say that, you know, he's falling by gravity or, you know, you could say that this is a full-blown attack and why would he be using this if it's just slow as hell? And I think that's fair. But one thing to note about that is prior to this, A lands two shots to Sasuke on the neck. So he hits him with two neck shots and he already tried a time before that. So he's aiming for Sasuke's neck. This time, he has him down on the ground. He's literally laying on his back. So for him to jump down to do a less speed-efficient move and more of a strength-based finishing move is probably consistent since he yeah. also tries to jump and move to you know his throat again. And we also do see him move his leg kind of down like an axe kick as well. Um, but still, uh, I think it's considering Sasuke is able to react to this far more than he was the other attacks you know he's able to actually put up a full shield then put spikes on it and react otherwise he's able to do this when prior he wasn't so we know it has to also be slower so i think you know him you know intercepting this from we don't even know what distance isn't as crazy as what some people like to believe and i don't think his sand is just gonna blitz heavy sasuke because heavy sasuke is pretty impressive um you know 
So I think that's kind of how they'd interact. But I think past that, I don't think they really have anything to deal with Heavy Sasuke. Yeah, yeah, that's that's one of the things that I uh, <laughs> made the mistake of doing in that video is talking about that sand and sort of overrating it. Um, so yeah, I've, I've definitely uh, changed my mind on that since then. I do think it's still fast. It's probably, you know, on that level of maybe like V1A, but V2A is far too fast. We know that Sasuke with the Mangekyo was able to easily react to that final attack that we're talking about. Um, so... Even if you want to get it all the way up to, you know, the, those V1 levels, you could make an argument that, you know, the CM2 enhanced Sharingan would have no problem perceiving it. Uh, physically, whether he uses body flicker or, you know, otherwise, he should have no issue getting past it. Um, so... And even if he can't necessarily get past it, the AP increase that he gets from being in CM2 should allow him to just tear through any of Gara's sand constructs. So I don't think that he's going to have too much of an issue. I do think they could like maybe prolong the fight a little bit uh, by keeping him at range with their ranged attacks. But as soon as he gets in close, it's it's pretty much over. Yeah, no, I, 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 I completely agree. I think it's pretty bad at that point. So yeah, we do have heavy Sasuke, you know, beating May and Gara. Now... Last for Summit Sasuke's matchups, we have him against Itachi, and this one's kind of interesting, but, you know, listen, Itachi is probably still above this Summit Sasuke, yeah. like, just to be honest, because it's pretty implied that the Ford data book also just outright states this, that Sasuke, you know, is equal to his brother and finally surpasses him in EMS, you know, which is consistent as the Tsukiyomi is able to clash with his Genjutsu and stuff like that, so... You know, he's probably a much, much closer to this EMS counterpart. And if you want to know where I think Itachi scales in relation to, like, his Edo stuff, you can watch my Itachi vs. Pain video. Um, I discussed it kind of in, in depth there. I'm not going to go into it here, but um, I think that that's pretty fair to say he's not too far off. You know, he's not, definitely not, like, slower than by, like, a Blitz tier or nothing like that. Especially when taken to, like, his 30% Chakra uh, feats and whatnot. And how good his uh, like stamina was there and then you compare it to when he actually allows himself to get sick and then you compare him you know in the heavy sasuke fight but regardless if you say that you know we've already agreed that summit sasuke and heavy are probably comparable and itachi's able to perception blitz him during their shuriken clash with the clone so i mean he's able to you know perception blitz somebody who's a relative caliber to the person he's facing now um now of course their arsenals are kind of you know hard to get through like you know they both have a Madarasu, um which is kind of interesting but i mean past that listen yeah the inton's cool but itachi does have yadamir totsuka blade yep. and susano you know what i mean um, we're not gonna say the Itachi is gonna throw the fight either, like how we do with Heavy, because I think that'd be kind of disingenuous. Because you know, then it's like, yeah, he could win, but he's yeah. just gonna lose anyway. Um, so I think Itachi has a pretty good arsenal advantage. I think the Yadimir counters virtually anything that the Sasuke has to throw, and I think he could seal him with the Totsuka Blader and stuff like that. Yeah, and he's just you know faster as well. Yeah, well, and and you know, if you were saying that like Sasuke has knowledge about Itachi. Um, you know, from that fight or whatever, then sure, I guess maybe you could argue, like, he would know to avoid the Totsuka Blade, but really, if we're just, like, taking them, you know, kind of baseline knowledge, not really knowing their secret techniques and stuff like that, um, then the Totsuka Blade w would probably just surprise him, because he'd probably put up the Susano and just get stabbed through the Susano with it, uh, and then, you know, I I'm, I am not really, I'm not really on the, uh, Amaterasu, you know, GG wave for a lot of people because we've seen it be dodged and particularly in the, um, you know, in, in the A fight with Sasuke versus A, we actually see that it appears in front of A and then he moves out of the way and you can actually see, as you watch the panels, you can see like the after image and his physical body in the same panel and you can still see one of the legs of the Amaterasu way, uh, flame is still in front of his arm. So we know for sure that it, it, it appears in front of the target and then moves toward it, at least with the Amaterasu. So I know a lot of people have talked about like in this battle, you know, could they hit each other inside of their Susano with the Amaterasu because some people, you know, seem to think that it just instantly appears on the target which isn't the case. Um, we know that it travels. So with that being said, since the Totsuka Blade is said to be able to like cancel out all jutsu, like all, all attacks become meaningless before it, things like that, I don't even think that the Amaterasu from Sasuke would even work as a win condition in that way. But I do think it's possible that, like you could make an argument that Itachi might be able to hit Sasuke from within his Susanoo, um, 
But you could also argue that the, you know, the Susano obstructing the path of the Amaterasu might be a valid counter to that. So there's their, ma their abilities match up really interestingly in this fight. I just think, you know, whenever you take into consideration the fact that, you know, Hebi Sasuke should scale relative to, you know, this MS Sasuke that we're talking about, and Itachi was just sandbagging really hard in that fight... There's no reason for me to believe that this Sasuke is physically superior. I don't think that his arsenal is necessarily better. Uh, they kind of cancel each other out. So it really is just going to come down to who is the better battle tactician. And I think that's indisputably Itachi. So at this point in time, Itachi probably wins in a tough one. Um, but yeah, I, I don't think that this one should be that contentious. But I know that there will be some Sasuke guys that are that are going to give some pushback here. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I completely agree. I think Itachi definitely wins, but, um, you know, I am an Itachi guy, but, you know, I had, I had to get Sage, you know, he, he's also on the same wave, so yeah, yeah, yeah. it's not just biased, I promise. <laughs> um, now, last but not least for any matchup we have, we have the heaviest final matchup, and that's against Donzo, and oh, this one is probably going to piss some people off. Yeah. Okay. But Sasuke, during the summit, had way more finishing moves and way better, you know, way, way better arsenal than he did in Heavy. He has, you know, now the Anton, he now has the Susano arrow, he now has a V2 and V3 Susano to use. He now has better Genjutsu and he's faster and stronger, okay? So we have all these things. And this Donzo, people hate to hear it, he keeps up with them, okay? He keeps up with them pretty fairly and he has 12 Izanagi Sharingan. Um, he's able to pierce him at the same time as it's Dory Sasuke, and he also has another feat, like, let's say he takes off the bandage around his eye, okay, he's able to completely blitz like it's Dory Sasuke, and it's, yeah. it's a weird feat, he's able to just open it up, Sasuke charges at him with the Chidori, and he just steps out of the way and dead sprints, and he covers way more ground, so... You know, saying they're comparable, and especially when Donzo begins to use his Sharingan more combatively like that, he's shown to be faster. So I think it is pretty consistent. You know, of course, like Donzo's not reacting to things such as the Susano Arrow or Enton, but I mean, is Hebi Sasuke either? Probably not. Right. So, you know, I think what can Hebi Sasuke do to put this Donzo down that many times? You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, and another advantage that that MS Sasuke had is he could just keep the Susano up and there's nothing that Donzo had in his arsenal that could actually do anything. But we do know for a fact that he's able to pierce through him whenever he doesn't have the Susano. So if he gets close to him, you know, gets decapitated or whatever, but uses the Izanagi and Sasuke's off guard, then he could definitely like land a killing blow on him because he doesn't have the Susano active. He also isn't going to be starting in CM2. So even if you argue that he gets a significant durability amp with that it won't really matter because he's just gonna get stabbed through the back and there's not anything he can do about it um i actually think that you know in, in this scenario weirdly like donzo has every advantage that there is to have here because in terms of his stamina i mean heavy sasuke has really good stamina but I, i'm not sure if it's like better than donzo's it, i would say maybe slightly but because he has the hashirama cells we know that obito notes that his physical abilities have gotten an amp so you could argue that you know without getting crushed by the susano over and over again and literally like squished to death you know like it, he probably would be doing a lot better against somebody who doesn't have that so man I don't see a genuine win condition here for Sasuke unless maybe he like uses Genjutsu off rip. Uh, and even then, I'm not entirely sure if that would create a valid win condition for him because Donzo would likely have the Izanagi ready to go. So, I don't know, man. I I'm... I know a lot of people are going to be mad about this, dude. I know a lot of people are going to be very pressed. But, you know, if you yeah. sub out... Five Kage Summit Sasuke in that scenario for Heavy Sasuke, I think that he probably takes him down with one, maybe two Izanagi, maybe. I just don't see a way that Sasuke counters the Izanagi. Is there anything that you could think of off the top of your head? I mean, I guess, like, if you argue that he starts in CM2, I mean, we've never seen this, but, like, they do have nature energy, so maybe it could be, like, his his senses are enhanced or something. <laughs> I don't know. Like, I don't, I don't see a yeah. single way that he gets away around Izanagi. No, I, I completely agree. I mean, listen, what also does he have in his arsenal that can tank the vacuum blast that just blew the entire black out of, like, the V3 Susano? What does he have that's above his Susano's durability? Yeah. Like, nothing. You know what I mean? Like, these vacuum style could one-shot. And with all the diversions and stuff that, like, Donzo was able to pull off. You know, I, I think it's just pretty clear that, you know... If you don't, if you think that Kieran at all times is how it was in the Itachi fight, and he just starts off with it, okay, that's great. There's one Izanagi. 
you know, he has to do that, you know, 10 more times at least. So, you know, I definitely think Donzo could probably take this um, against Heavy Sasuke, just in all fairness. But um, I, I'm not going to say it's like a stomp, but I, I definitely think uh, Donzo uh, takes it. But, um, you know, that's the video. If you guys did enjoy, you know, please make sure to like and subscribe and go check out Sage. His channel will be linked down in the description below. Um, definitely putting out some heat and we're definitely going to be continuing to work together a lot more. You know, I'll probably be on his channel, whatever soon. So, um, you know, definitely go check all that out. Like, sub, all that good stuff. And uh, yeah, as always, love you guys.